Welcome back to the Crochet Crowders with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. It is the summer in Devonshire throw and it's also a doily. I'm going to do two in one today so both the doily and the throw will be available in this tutorial. Close captioning takes time and the doily is pretty close to the same except for round number 11 is where I'll change it for the doily. This here is made up of very large squares that have the pineapple shape that's in here. This picture is kind of hard to see what's going on, but I'll have a demonstration in a moment. And what this is, is that on the very final round, they all connect to each other. I think this one, see how she's using this as a wrap? I think this is a really sharp looking wrap or a throw or throw size. For some regions of the world, this may be too lacy uh, in order for warmth, but I think this is more of an accessory item to begin with. So I'm going to be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook with a Karen, or sorry, with Red Heart Comfort yarn. This does suggest to use six millimeter size J with Red Heart Super Saver. It's five skeins of Aran yarn. Let me show you the two different examples and you can decide what to do. And the instructions are gonna be all the way the same for everybody from rounds number or rounds number one through 10 and then 11 will be changing the story at that point, depending on which one you're working on. So let's look at the examples. So it's easier to show on the camera, but this is the doily size version. And I used the three millimeter size D crochet hook. And I also used Peyton's Grace, one ball of Peyton's Grace to be able to make this. And so you can see that this would be a really cool doily. It's 10 inches by 10 inches, it's square. It does puff out a little bit in the center here. Now the original that has, there's a connection spots that are added to each one of the sides that connect to each other. But if you don't wanna connect anything, then you can just use the round number 11 that I will share with you when we get there. And what I think this does is that I think I need to block it. So I just need to dampen it, just stretch it out and let it uh, air dry flat and therefore you'll have it. But I haven't blocked it yet and it still looks pretty cool. So let me show you the other sample of using the regular yarn with the regular size hook. So here's the regular yarn with the regular size hook. You can see that this is a pretty massive size square. It's 15 inches total. And when they connect to each other, they connect in a lacy format right here, uh, connecting the next one to it. And when it's laying all flat, you'll see how uh, smart this thing looks. So it's only 11 rounds. I did question that when I was looking at the pattern in the beginning, but really um, it's not a hard pattern to do. I think the first time I went through it, well, I know the first time I went through it, I was pretty slow at it. And because I wasn't understanding exactly what I was looking at but once I got and did the second one I got faster at it and then once I did the third I'm like okay I understand this pattern and I can just uh, look at it with confidence and be able to know what to do next so without further ado let's grab our crochet hook and let's uh, <laughs> go to the refrigerator and eat our feelings and then begin this right now so if you're doing the doily use a D size three millimeter in one ball of Peyton's Grace and follow the instructions from one to 10. Everybody else that's doing the regular size, just use regular size yarn. And it says a six millimeter size J. I'm using an I size five and a half with my Red Heart Comfort. Let's create the first slip knot and we're going to begin the first chain. So no matter which product you're using, do the same thing. So chain eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and insert your hook into the very beginning chain. Yarn over and pull through and through to form the center ring. And put this straggler around the outside of the ring so it'll get trapped underneath and we'll deal with it at the end of number one. So let's begin round number one. Round number one, we're going to chain four and that will be one of the trebles that it'll be. So there's gonna be a total of 28 trebles. So if this is one, you have to do 27 more trebles to go around this thing. It's a lot of yarn, sorry, it's a lot of stitches. So wrap the hook twice and going into the center of the ring and just keep adding. What I would do if I were you is I wouldn't bother to count right off the hop if you don't want to, as long as you can identify the stitches. And I want you to continue to add more and more until you can count a total of 28 which is also including that chain four. So please do that and meet me back here. I'm gonna uh, just meet you back uh, partially the way through because I wanna show you something else. So I have not started counting yet, but I know that I'm based on my experience that I got a lot more to do, but I'm running out of space here in the center. I want you to just to grab onto these trebles and grab onto that chain and just kind of pull and move those around so that you're exposing more of the, of the, the ring. And you're just going to keep on adding and adding and adding so make sure you keep doing that until all 28 of the troubles are in place i'll be right back 
So I've come all the way back around. I did confirm off camera that there's 28, which includes that chain four. Once you have all those, please make sure that you slip stitch and bring things to a conclusion. Now, if you went over top of the straggler like I did, you can safely just cut that. If you didn't, you'll have to just manually put it in with the tapestry needle. So let's move on to round number two. Round number two, right where you're sitting, you need to chain five, which will be a treble and a chain one space. So one, two, three, four, that's your treble. And the fifth one is a chain one space. Starting in the very next stitch after the one that you did the join with, you are going to treble. And then chain one, and then move to the next one. So treble. And chain one and you're going to do this all the way around by the time you get all the way around just say that this is a spoke of a wheel there should be 28 of these spokes with uh, one chain in between each please do this all the way around for round number two coming all the way around I have my 28 spoke make sure that you do chain one after it and you're going to attach to the fourth chain up not the fifth so that you maintain a chain one space in between like this. So there should be a total of 28 of these spokes going around. This is round number two. Round number three, we're going to move to this chain one space right here. So you're going to slip stitch and move on over. Chain one and single crochet into the same space. Here's the repeat going all the way around is that you'll chain three and then just jump to the next chain one space and plop in a single crochet. So chain three and single crochet in the next space and do that all the way around. You should have 28 of these chain spaces. However, meet me on the very last one because I have to show you because there's something different about the last one when you go to join. So continue this around, I'll be right back. I'm coming close to the end. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to single crochet into the one here. And I still have to have this join to the next one, but how we're going to do it is that we need to end in the middle of the space. And so if I chain three and slip stitch on over, I'm not in the middle of the space, I'm sitting on a single crochet. So at this point, I'm going to join right now to, with a half double crochet join, and that will bridge it to make it look like it's a regular space. And this puts us exactly where we need to be. And I know what you're thinking at this point. Well, when do we go to a square? Well, if you weren't, you're now thinking it. And that's going to be in the next round number four is that we're going to start doing the conversion and the birth of the pineapples will begin. So number four really threw me for a loop. Pardon the pun, but it did. And I was really confused on what it's actually asking me to do. And it took me a few times. And then I like, oh my goodness, I understand. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a cluster. It doesn't say that, but that's what you're doing through the instructions and you're chaining two and you're going to come in and double crochet into the same loop where this is coming out of. And by doing this, this is called the beginning cluster. So now that the cluster is done, we have to chain three. And here's where we're going to do. We're going to skip two loops. We're going to go to the third. And in the third one, we need to apply nine double crochets there. This is the birth of the pineapple. The pineapple is not on a corner. So you're going to think, well, it's probably on a corner. It's not. And so you need to put in nine double crochets there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Once the nine are in, this is the birth of a pineapple. So I want you to look at it from a, like a clock point of view. This is uh, three o'clock or it could be nine o'clock depending if you're left or right. And so this here is the sides. So the actual corner is coming up here. After this is done, you're going to chain three. So one, two, three, and you need to skip two loops again. So skip the next two. And right here is going to become a cluster. How you do the cluster is that you're gonna yarn over and going into the third loop away. And you're going to begin and start like that. So it's basically a two together double crochet. 
So you wrap the yarn again, going into the same loop, pull through, pull through two and hold. You'll have three loops and your yarn over and you pull through all three and that's a cluster. We're now going to chain three, one, two, three, and the next stitch right after here, the next loop is also a cluster. So you're gonna yarn over and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold, and then yarn over, do it again, same loop, pull through, pull through two and hold, and you have three here, and you pull through all three. This is a corner. I don't understand that until the future when I was doing it the first time, but that's what that is. You're now going to chain three, so one, two, three, and you were going to skip two loops and go to the third and do the nine double crochets again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so this is the birth of another pineapple. So look at it from this point of view. So it's at the 12 o'clock position. Chain three after it. Skip two loops, go to the third and cluster again. So everything is now a repeat going around. Chain three and cluster immediately into the next one. Chain three. That chain three is pretty consistent, just so you know. So just skip two loops and put nine into the third one away and continue to do it. And you're gonna see how everything will kind of square off, but technically the square is actually like that. Okay, so please repeat the same idea going all the way around. So right where you're sitting, you've chained three, skip two loops, put nine in, chain three, skip two loops, put in a cluster, chain three, cluster into the next, and so on. And please repeat this all the way around. So I'm repeating all the way around. I have this fourth one in, this is the beginning of a pineapple, skip two. And this is the loop before I started. This one here, make sure you chain three to get there first. That's a cluster. And then chain three to join it to the top of the first cluster. And you've now just completed yourself all the way around. So you're gonna to notice to yourself is that the corner is technically right here. So you're never truly starting on a corner of a square and you will see that this will start squaring off in the favor of these spots here in the future because right now it looks like those are the corners, but they're not. So let's continue then to the next round, number. So let's start and we're going to start with the beginning cluster. So we'll chain two and in the same top of piece, just double crochet in. Now we need to chain three to match over here to the pineapple. That's a consistent thing that you'll notice. And so if you can understand that, it's great. So one, two, three, before. So now that the chain three is done, you are going to treble into the first double crochet in the grouping of nine, chain one, and then treble into the next one. And you keep doing that until you get all nine of those filled in. So chain one, so I'm gonna quiet down for a few moments and do it. So I chain one and I'm coming into the very last one. So make sure you don't chain one after you do the last one. Okay, so you've just made that bigger. Now you're going to chain three. I told you that's a consistent thing. So it's a chain three before you get here. It's a chain three after you're finished there. So one, two, three, and you're going to cluster in the cluster. chain three, and then cluster in the next cluster. Okay. 
So to start over here first, we have the chain three, and then you're going to slam in your sing uh, trebles, chain one, trebles, and etc., and continue that motion all the way around. So this will be round number five. I'm coming around to number five. I have the chain three after the last cluster was put in and just join it to the top of the first cluster. So when I was doing this for the very first time, I thought, well, geez, these are the corners because it, it's looking that way. And what we're about to do, uh, not this next round, but the one after that, we're gonna start really developing these to be your corners. So it's technically looking like this at this moment. So it kind of throws you off from where you are. Let's begin number six. Let's begin number six, and we're going to start with the chain two and a double crochet in the first one. This is your beginning cluster once again. And we're going to chain three. I told you that's consistent when you're coming out of these going into the here. It's now fun to my point of view. So all of these spaces in between get something. And it's just like how remember we did the chain three here. We're going to be doing that again. So we come in after the first treble and before the second one, go right into the space and you're going to single crochet, then chain three, come to the next one, and you keep filling those in. So chain three, I find it fun, but you know, my brain is different. So one, two, three, and keep on doing it until you run out of those spaces. So one, two, three. So I found the first time I was counting like an idiot and I didn't need to, I just have to look for the spaces. And that tells the story and that can speed you up when you do it again. So if you are counting, you're not an idiot. I was just saying that for my own benefit. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come into the last one here. So this is the last trouble. So there's nothing after here for me to do the same thing. So that's where I'm going to stop it. So we've technically just eliminated out a stitch by doing that. Okay, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces that we filled in, but you'll see that you'll have one less. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is what you're looking for. We're going to chain three and then just cluster, uh, cluster into the next. And we're doing something slightly different between the two clusters. So watch this in a second. So we need the clusters to open up on us to get further apart. And so we are going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you jump into the next cluster. So it provides more distance and this is going to make, make room for the corner. Okay. So now you're going to chain three and then jump after the first treble and single crochet chain three and keep filling those in. So I want you to do that. Just remember that between the clusters, there is five, uh, chain of five, not three, and therefore it'll start opening up and it will start kind of coming out on you to look more and more like a corner, but especially in the future. Continue this for round number six. So I'm coming around to number six. I make sure that I chain five before I join it to the first cluster. And therefore that's what that looks like so far. So let's continue to round number seven. So let's start number seven. and number seven, we're going to officially start building out corners. So we're going to start by chaining two and putting a double crochet in the first. That is your beginning cluster. Chain three, that's consistent. And this time you're coming to the space after the first single crochet. And so you're gonna single crochet, chain three, and then keeps jumping in between these small little spaces. Chain three, coming in. Chain three. So it's pretty easy as long as you're consistent on how you started. But this pattern is very intimidating. Okay, chain three. And you stop after the next single crochet is there and there's no, it's not the same. So you end up with one last loop by doing it. Now you're gonna chain three to get to the first cluster and you're going to cluster. So that's not gonna change on you. Now, you want to, at this point, chain three. And you see this chain five space, you're going to apply a corner in there. And the corner is in the abbreviations and it's essentially two double crochet first. 
chain three to turn the corner and two double crochet back into the same chain five space. So you're now officially making your corners. Before you can get to the next cluster though, you need to chain three and cluster into the top of the cluster. So then what are you gonna do to get over to your pineapple? You always have to chain three. So, and then start in the space after the first single crochet and continue that around. So your corners are being developed now and you're going to notice is that these clusters will start kind of hugging the pineapples and then the corners will build out just like so. So please go all the way around. This is round number seven. So I'm coming all the way around. I got my cluster in here and I have to finish this. So I'm gonna chain three first. This is gonna finish and do this complete corner. So I'll put in two double crochet, chain three and two double crochet. and then chain three to join it before joining it to the first cluster that you started with. So as I promised you, you were, you're not actually starting anything on a, on a true corner, you're actually just after the corner. And so we're now gonna move on to round number eight. Okay, let's start number eight. You're gonna chain two and then cluster, or do the beginning cluster, so double crochet into the same. So it's still chain three to reach on over to the pineapple, and you're gonna go right after the first single crochet and start in that space and you're just gonna single crochet and chain three and continue that. So you're running out of loops with this because you've been eliminating a loop every time you keep going around. So after you're there and you have your single crochet, there's nothing left. So you're gonna chain three and you were gonna come into the cluster and make that as a cluster. You were going to chain three and starting in the very first, this is your corner, so starting in the very first double crochet, make that as a double crochet and the next one. And then the space, the chain three space is going to be a new corner. So it'll be two double crochet, chain three, and two double crochet. And then these two after the corner is turned is going to be one double crochet each. And before you can start playing within this uh, cluster, you have to chain three before you start there, you cluster in. And then how many chains does it take to get to a pineapple? It's three. So chain three and then start after the first single crochet and make your way over top of the pineapple and etc. So you can see that the corner is getting more and more. And continue this around for lucky round number eight. Coming around to number eight, I just completed this corner. I've chained three and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first cluster there. So you can really see those clusters are kind of coming out and building out, making room for the corner. So let's move on to number nine. Okay, let's get this back in our hands and let's do number nine. Chain two and then double crochet in the first to do the beginning cluster. So what are you gonna do to get over to the pineapple? Always chain three. Come into the space after the single crochet is here and start move, moving along. So single, chain three, and single. So there's less and less. Chain three, just like that. Okay, so you can't do any more. So you need to chain three and cluster into the next one right here, the cluster and the cluster. Okay, so we're gonna head to the corner. So you need to chain three first and see the four here. Each one of those are going to get a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, and four and then your corner is at normal so it's a two double crochet first and then we're going to chain three to turn and two more double crochet into the same space 
and see those four here? That's also going to be one double crochet each. So we have one, two, three. And you really don't need to count it if you can see where the stitches are. So chain three to jump to a cluster. And then chain three to jump to the next pineapple. And keep doing that all, all the way around and you'll see that the corners are gonna really grow out. This is round number nine. So I'm coming all the way back around of chain three and I'm just going to join it to the top of the first cluster. So round number 10 is gonna be the final round before we start getting serious about joining to other things. And so let's begin round number uh, 10 in just a moment. So let's begin number 10. The instructions almost gave me diarrhea. <laughs> Not kidding, maybe. So what we have is that it has an instruction that to me didn't make sense, but I understand it now that I've done it. So watch. I'm going to chain two and I'll do the beginning cluster, which is what I understood. And it says to, um, says chain eight holding back the last loop on the hook and i'm like what the hell is that so anyway watch what this means you're going to chain eight <laughs> so one two three four five six seven eight if you were about to do a four treble um, together and the only way that this whole chain doesn't start spinning around aimlessly on your hook is if you don't hold it so that's what they mean so pinch it first and then wrapping the hook twice, and then coming into the first loop after the single crochet. So it's a, it's a chain three loop after the single, yarn over, pull through, pull through two and two, and you can let that go and it won't stop, it'll stop spinning on you. So you're now gonna do three more like that. So just wrap the hook, you don't have to hold on to it, go to the next loop, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So wrap twice, do the next one, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And then finally do it one last time. And that will take you through all those loops that are part of the pineapple. You should see five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and then you're gonna carry on by chaining eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We need to jump all the way to the cluster. It feels like a big jump, but this is also a big chain. So we're going to cluster. Again, just pinch it to prevent it from unspinning and then just start. And once you get it started, you can let it go. And so you'll do a cluster here. Your corners are gonna be done differently than what you understand it to be. So you're going to chain three and it's gonna feel wrong in every level, but it, it works. So you're gonna skip, sorry, you're gonna skip the chain three, go to the first four only of the six. So you're going to double crochet into the first four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then it says that you have to skip the next two double crochets. So you're gonna chain three, so one, two, three, skip the next two, and come right into the corner and do your corner as what you know it to be. So you're going to put in two double crochet first, chain three, and two double crochet. And now let's continue down this side. So you need to chain three first, and you're gonna skip the two double crochets that start a corner out, and you're gonna do the other four that are left. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then you were going to chain three, so one, two, three, and cluster into the next cluster. So now you have to chain that eight again to collect all of these to finish off this pineapple. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, holding it, so pinch it, and then spin twice, so wrap twice, going into the first one. And this is the first chain three loop after the single crochet. And once you get the first one on there, you can let it go. So wrap twice and do the next three in a row. 
the holding back of the chain on the loop on the hook really threw me for a loop. So once you see all five, pull through all five, chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to come all the way to the cluster right here. And so you can see I just pinched it down just to hold it to prevent it from unspinning. That's what happens when the chains are so long. And then chain three. And you're going to double crochet the first four. Chain three, skip these two, and go right into your corner with what you already know. And this will be then round number 10. And you'll see that the pineapples are going to look complete after this round. Coming up to the end of number 10, I'm just chaining three and I'll join it to the first cluster. Now round number 11 is going to change the story for many things and we're going to cover that next. If you were doing the doily, round number 11 is different from what's written. What I want you to do is that I want you to chain up one right where you're sitting and then place one single crochet into that space or into that stitch. See this chain eight? Put in eight single crochets into that space and then one into the top of the, the one that's together. And then you're gonna do eight single crochets and then one to the top. So when you did a chain three space, I want you to place in three single crochets into that space and one into every one of the stitches around. In the corners, I want you to place in three single crochets. So you're gonna notice is that we need to block this at the end, so you just need to dampen it. Once you're done, you just need to dampen it and just stretch it out, let it air dry, and you're good to go, and you have a really beautiful doily. For everybody else, we're, we need to create a connection spot, which happens on round number 11. Round number 11, the very first time that you're about to do this is that you need to create the connection spots for at least the first one, and then the rest of them will join as you go. So we have to do the first square as if it's not joining to anything because there's nothing to join to. And that's what we need to do next. And let me show you those points first. So here's round number 11. The first square is if you're not doing it to anything and you're leaving these loops. And these loops are the connection spots. They're equally on all four sides. So when you go to join another one to this, you can choose any size of the square, any side of the square to connect at the exact same spots. Now, I did see somebody today that uh, misunderstood the instructions on round number 11. I did too. So I want to cover that with you. You just have to remember that there's five chains in between each one of these connecting loops. I almost look at it like shower curtain ring holders that they're equally spaced across. And so once you understand that, it's really easy to see where these things are in the future. And then at the end of this whole thing, which I will cover as well, there's the final border to have all the ones that are still exposed to be under control. So what I need to show you is how this is going to work. And then you're gonna do one whole square like that. And when you do squares number two, three, four, five, whatever ones, you can join it any way that you want to. I'd recommend that you only join two sides at the same time though. Don't do three because it'll get complicated and just concentrate on doing that. So a question you're gonna ask me, well, how many squares are there? There's a total of 12. So there's uh, three rows that are five or that are four you know, long, okay? But what I would do is start off with the corner one, build it out and keep on building. And so it's essentially a blanket that's a three by four squares. Let's start round number 11 as if we're not joining it to anything. Let's start round number 11 as if we're not joining anything. Here's my tip of caution. It says just a slip stitch over here, but when you slip stitch, see how this big space is? You gotta be careful with that. So what I would do is just slip stitch a couple right into the chain itself, and that'll get you closer to the center of that, which is where you need to be. I found if you just slip stitch and just go right in, it, it stays on the one side. Chain up one and single crochet around that chain eight space. Chain five. And single crochet back into that chain eight space. So all these chain spaces are each going to get this loop. So to jump to the next space you have the chain five and then go right into the space single crochet and then chain five to form a loop and come back into the same spot. Do you see that? So you're gonna chain five to jump to the next space. So one, two, three, four, five. Come into the space, 
and then make a connection loop. So one, two, three, four, five into the same spot. And then how many to jump to the next space? Did you say five? So one, two, three, four, five. Come on in and create a connection loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and come back in. So then the corner is next. So how are you gonna to get to the corner? It's a, it's a chain space, so you're gonna chain five and go right into the corner and make it a, as a connection loop. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the very corner. And so you can see you're making all these connection loops as you go. So to start a new side, is you're going to chain five to jump to the next space. Make that loop. And then chain five to go to the next space. Come on in to the next space, create the loop. Come into the next space, it's a big one. So one, two, three, four, five. Create the connection loop. Come on in. So jump to the next space on the other side of the pineapple. And then create the connection loop. So I want you to continue all the way around and basically at the end of this, this whole square will have all these connection loops that you'll need in the future and it's a great way to keep an eye on things and, uh, and it has all equal counts. So go all the way around and we'll review in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around, I'm making all my connection spots, coming on in and right where we started, we started with this first loop so we have the chain five to get there. So you're going to fasten off your yarn and this will be the very first time that you ever have any of the squares done. And so let me try to see if I can zoom you out. I'll be right back. So here's what the square looks like. You have all your connection spots attached and you're ready to attach everything that you need to do. So what I recommend to you is that you only attach to two sides at one time. I would not attach to the first side that you're starting with. I would attach the second side and the third side at the most and leave the fourth side empty. So when you go to put this together, be strategic about it when you go to do that. And if you're not playing with any specific colors and you're just aligning things, then just uh, be smart about that. So what we need to do now is that I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to show you how to attach the second motif. So in, on there's another round number 11 for when you need to join these and you're going to join it as you go so you don't have to sew these suckers together. Let's begin to do round number 11 once again, but with a join. So I've been working on my homework, so I have, have some stuff already completed. So I have my first square here. You can see that it's been attached to the other squares. And so when I go to demonstrate this, I'm going to be able to show you how to demonstrate to do one side, but also to turn the corner and do the other side so that you have the most maximum amount of tutorial that you can have. So let's uh, begin and we're going to keep this pretty close by. Make sure the right side is facing up. If you don't know which side's facing up uh, the right side, it's the side that you've been always rotating around that you've been looking at. That is your right side. And if you're not sure what that is, just mark it with a stitch marker so that when you can do this, you don't accidentally put your square into this upside down. Let's begin to do round number 11, joining it to this. So let's begin. We're not going to join anything to this side as we begin. And as I said, if you just slip stitch into this, you're going to end up with a lopsided join. So just slip stitch over a few of the chains. That's my recommendation. And then going around and single crocheting in. So it gets you closer to the middle of that section. Chain five to create the loop. So in the future, you might have a square that will butt up against this side. So then chain five to jump. Now I've already shown you once, so this should be a little bit easier for you to understand. So come to the next space, single in, create the loop. And what I'm trying to pay attention to the most is when the corner happens. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. 
three, four, five. It's a very airy join. So one, two, three, four, five. And then coming into here and we'll join loop. So we need to get to a corner first, so chain five, and then this is where the story will change slightly. So we're going to join this corner to the very first corner here. So the right side is facing up, and I like to scoop the uh, squares up from underside. So instead of chaining five to create the joining loop, you're only gonna chain two, and you're going to get the matching corner loop on this one, and I like to go on the underside and pick it up and pull through. That's considered number three, and then four and five, and bring it back to the corner with a single crochet. So you've officially joined the corners to each other. So you have to get to this spot first, so you gotta chain five, going in, and when you create the connection loop, you're gonna chain only two, and then get the matching one on this one here. Again, scooping it up, and if you have it laying down, you're going to notice that all these will line up perfectly to each other where they're supposed to be. So one, two, coming back in. And then jump to the next space. So one, two, three, four, five. Going into the space. And then connection spot. One, two. The next one. Three, four, five. And then back in. So you can see how it's joining. And then come to this space, so chain five. Create the connection, so one, two, three, four, five, and back in. Beats sewing, doesn't it? So now you're gonna come to the next space, so one, two, three, four, five, and in. Connect, one, two, three, four, five, and back in. And jump to the next space. So one, two, connect, four, five, back in. Next space, one, two, three, four, five, and in chain two, connect four, five, and back. So if there was nothing here, the corner here would be the last corner that I would do before turning around and just finishing this side as if I'm not connecting to anything. So one, two, three, four, five, go into the corner. So if it was not attaching to anything else here, but it was just this one, I would one, two, connect to this corner, and then a four or five back, and then continue around on this one to continue. In this case, there's something here. So I wanna still chain one, two, and when I connect, I wanna connect where the rest of them are connecting at the same spot, again, scooping up underneath. So this is three, four, and five. So if I stay at that connection spot, it'll look consistent. And then coming back into the corner, we'll pull it up. And you can see that it does a nice join right in the center. So you're gonna continue down this side just with what I showed you. So just let's rotate everything. So one, two, three, four, five, come into the next space and then connect one, two, connect four, five, and back. And one, two, three, four, five, jump and connect. One, two, connect, four, five, back, jump to the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, connect, one, two, back. So you can see that you're just attaching all this stuff at the same time. One, two, three, four, five. 
So connect one, two, connect three, of and one, two, three, four, five, and jump. And connect one, two, and keep on going in the same motion. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, connect, four, five, and back. So in this case, when I'm coming around here, there's nothing to join um, to these pieces right here. So the corners to corners are going to be the last before I continue to move around and um, just continue this corner as, as regular so I'm creating connections for the future. So one, two, go into the corner. Four, five, and back. So now I can just continue down this side here. There's nothing to connect to, so it's what you already know. So you're just creating those connection spots, but what you've left in behind is the one here is now officially attached to the rest of your blanket, and it's a nice airy join that you can see when the model is holding it. Please continue this all the way around, and then we're gonna cover the border after this. So I'm coming all the way around, and I've just got a chain five after the last connection loop that I made and just join it to the first single crochet that I started with. You are going to need to fasten this off, and so you're going to continue to build out this by adding more and more squares. Um, you can go more than the three by five, you can go as big or as small as you want to, and what we're going to do is cover the border then to go around this whole thing. So we're gonna cover that next. Okay, let's begin the border. Come into the very corner of your blanket, it can be any corner, and I want you to go right into the corner space and join. chain three, that'll count as one double crochet, and I want you to put in four more double crochets into that same spot. So we have one, two, three, and four. So see all these chain five loops? We're going to apply three double crochets in each one of these loops. So one, two, and three and come to this loop here and put only three. So one, two, and three. And you're gonna do that all the way across. So this chain five is gonna have only three. So one, two, three. The next one right here is three. You'll do this all the way to the next corner and on the next corner, you'll put in five double crochets to turn and continue along all of the sides, just exactly with what I showed you. So it's three double crochets in each chain five space. Okay, somebody's gonna ask me what happens with the joining. So there's chain five here, there's a chain five here. So just put three into each side of that. Okay, so don't split that up. So you have the trust in the pattern. So then come to this side, three into there. And then just keep resuming just with what you already know. Okay, I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm coming around and I've started here and I'm just going to join with the slip stitch. Now the next round has picots, which I absolutely love, but I know people that when I design with it, people have a bird about it, but you can decide what you wanna do, whether you wanna trace it just with a single crochet and forget about it. But here's the nice thing about this, is that the picots are done on the middle of these three. Do you see how there's grouped? The picot is done in the middle. So in the grouping of the five here, in the corner, you're just gonna chain up one and you'll apply one single crochet in each stitch, except for that the middle one of the grouping of five, you're gonna single crochet, chain three, and just slip stitch into there to make a pico. And then you move on and do the other two. So you have a pico right in the corner. So then see the grouping of three, single crochet in the first one, Pico into the middle one. So single, chain three, slip stitch, and pull through. And so then you'll single into the next two and just look for the middle one of the grouping of three and apply the pico. 
So a single crochet, picot, single crochet, and you'll do that all the way around. So in the corners, you're looking for the middle one of the grouping of five to create that one to be there. And that's all you need to do. When you get back around, you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning one, and therefore you're gonna weave in your ends, and then your project is good to go. So this would be how you would complete the final round. I'm not gonna do it with you on camera. I've just demonstrated how, and this is it. And we hope that you enjoy it. And please let me know how you did in the comments. And we'll see you again, hopefully, real soon. Bye-bye.